um, Bolts and the um, Blackhawks. But here's some NBA news, guys. I wanted to kind of bring in some NBA news, and I'm going to try to continue to bring in all the sports. I know I don't talk a lot about NASCAR and soccer. I think NASCAR season just ended recently. So, I again, guys, I'm sorry that I, I will try to incorporate that kind of stuff into my show in future shows. I will try to make sure that I talk about those two sports as well. And I'll probably even throw some golf in here as the season is getting ready to start in a matter of two months in Hawaii. Who would want to be in Kapalua right now to play golf? Because I would do that. In the, I'd be, I'd sign in, I'd be in an airplane right now <laughs> if I could get the chance to go to Hawaii and play. Um, but here's some uh, NBA news, guys. These are um, teams that are trending up and down right now. And my man, Kevin, out there would love to hear this. Trending upward is the 8-1 Boston Celtics. Celtics' eight-game winning streak was marked by an unfortunate Gordon Hayward injury. He got injured again, guys. He will miss a few weeks after under undergoing the surgery to fix his fractured left hand. And it's almost certain that Hayward will come back stronger than ever. Um here are some of the players they picked up. Kemba Walker has already posted 24 and a half points just in the shade below his career high, 25.6 successes with the Hornets. Furthermore, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown are performing better than the season and are arguably matching the high expectations people placed on them. Tatum has not only upped his scoring, 21.3 and rebounding, 7.6, but his three-point shooting has been stellar as well. Brown put up 30 points in the Spurs game and followed it up with a 25-point night against the Mavericks. Uh, Marcus Smart, uh, they are holding, and the defense are holding opponents to 103.8 points per game, good for the top spot in all of the NBA, guys. So there's the top defense um, right now in the NBA. One of the teams that's trending downward is the 2-8 New York Knicks, and I hate to say this, guys, all the Knicks fans out there. The Knicks fans have found themselves in a deeper hole this season. That is to emphasize how they've been hitting a new low, and now they have become a resident laughing stock of the National Basketball Association. They have lost eight of their last ten, eight of their first ten games, capped by an embarrassing 21-point loss at the hands of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Um, Knicks team president Steve Mills um, told them that it's uh, Scott and I are not happy with where we are right now. We think the team is not performing to the level that we anticipated or we expected to perform at. And there's something that we think we collectively have to do, a better job of delivering the product on the floor. Uh, Marcus Morris and Nixon, we acquire vet forward says, at the end of the day, F the X's and O's, we players have to come out, we have to be better. This is just what it is. We know what we need to do and what we need to do better. That's them coming out. One of the teams that's on an upward trend, guys, is the 7-3 Utah Jazz. With the arrival of Mike Connolly and Bojan Badagovic to bolster their offense, I hope I'm pronouncing those names correctly, were predicted by experts to be at the top half of the Western Conference. Donathan Mitchell is quickly evolving into a superstar. Our Rudy Gobert just banged the Defensive Player of the Year award. Um, Connolly expressed his satisfaction in seeing his partnership with Gobert grow. Just the spacing and the timing and the rhythm is coming together. The more and more I play, the easier it is starting to get. We are working today to see us start to have some good plays by the end of the season. Guys, other teams that are on the upward trend are the 7-2 and two Lakers. That's my man, Dana. The 7-2 and two Denver Nuggets. The 7-3 and three Milwaukee Bucks. And the 7-3 and three Houston Rockets. On the downward trend, guys, the six and four Minnesota Timberwolves, the four and six Portland Trailblazers, which I'm going to get to just here in a few seconds, and the Atlanta Hawks at three and six. Now, who did the Blazers go out and trip, pick up and sign? That would be one Carmelo Anthony. Yes. Carmelo Anthony drew a mixed reaction after his 115 104 loss to the shorthanded New Orleans Pelicans. The new Portland Trailblazer forward got a nod to start only hours ahead of this season debut. A move mostly was due to Damian Lillard's absence from the lineup due to back spasms. Um, Melo did not fare well, making only 4 of 14 from the four and route to his 10 points by logging a team worst minus 20 in his 24 minutes of play. While all the defensive miscues can't be attributed to him, he certainly won't be helping much on that end of the court, even if he does. Gets starter minutes. 
So guys, those are that's kind of like the NBA news again. If you have not heard that Carmel Anthony did sign with the Portland Trailblazers um, to get to booster their uh, club, it did not have a very good start. to his Blazer career, and hopefully it will get better uh, for Portland, who, again, was in the playoffs last year. So in the Western Conference, again, if most likely you're not going to see Golden State as Steph Curry's out for the season. Um, Clay Thompson is also out for the season last year, and Draymond Green can't do it alone. So it's going to be bad. Again, if you, you don't know, you know, there were some big trades. Kevin Durant is in New Jersey. He's not with um, both the same more he signed with the Nets along with Kyrie Irvin. And if you are a basketball fan, um, the Nets are trying to figure out how to, um, deal with Kyrie Irvin and his mood swing. So if that's something that, um, they're, the Nets are going to have to, you know, have to deal with moving forward. Um, but you know, that's, that's what I have guys in the form of the NBA news. Um, I have some NHL news as I'm watching hockey on TV as we speak. Again, guys, it's nothing, nothing with 12 minutes left in the first period. Uh, the Lightning has six shots. The Blackhawks have three shots so far in the game. Um, so here's what the NHL is trying to do. They're trying to figure out a puck and player tracking um, to be ready for the playoffs. Now, they're trying to get – more stats, make it more virtual for everyone out there who, um, you know, to make it easier for the non-hockey fans um, to do that. And, guys, in case you're out there, anyone out there calling in that wants to do the the uh, the sport thing, um, uh, the sports thing, then, you know, we can, we can talk about that there. Um, and guys, I don't know who guest number three was, but I don't appreciate the gif that was left in there. Um, so whoever that was, I don't appreciate that. Um, anyway, guys, uh, to get back to the NHL, um, the NHL will experiment with the puck and player tracking at the 2020 Honda NHL All-Star Game in St. Louis on January 25th. The system should be ready around the Stanley Cup playoffs. Uh, the NHL has spent years developing the system, which uses sensors and bucks on players to create hundreds of data points per second. The league is being deliberate with about the rollout. Um, we're continuing to test it, and we have to install the capability of, in every building. We have to make sure that every building is working, and instead to do the NHL commissioner, Gary Bettman. Um, this is going to be a work in progress. Uh, we want a basic technology to work, which we believe it will, and we are going to figure out how best to use it. Last season, the NHL experiment with the system in two games in Las Vegas and the 2019 NHL All-Star Game in San Jose. Um, Nameplates called pointers that will identify players as they move, sometimes also giving uh, shift link, skating speed, or distance travel. A rail along the bottom of the screen showed headshots of who was on the ice with the player shift link, speed, uh, skating speed, or distance travel underneath. A rail on the right side of the screen showed other information from shot speeds to offensive zone time and sometimes an ISO cam highlighting a certain player. Gray travel showed the path of the puck and blue trail showed the path of the player. Ask about public access to data on NHL.com. Commissioner Benton told reporters it's going to start as a broadcast enhancement, and then we'll make it from there. The system might be used to enhance officiating and video review someday as well. We're going to continue to use technology to get it right, and the fucking player tracking uh, at some point. Um, so those are the things that we're going to continue working on, because at the end of the day, our officials have the toughest job in all of sports. The other thing I wanted to talk about, guys, um, is NHL goalies embracing the switch to composite sticks. They're one of the only few players, guys, that still use the old wooden sticks. So this is they're, – they're switching to composite sticks. So here we go. 
Goalies are keeping wood sticks alive in the NHL, but perhaps not for long. Roughly half of the NHL are using the old technology in 2016. Today, five NHL goalies still use wooden sticks. Once you switch, it's amazing to hold a wooden stick and wonder how you played with it. Buffalo Sabres goalie Carter Hutton said, I switched two summers ago. This article got me by Kevin Woolley. Uh, uh, and he's an NHL independent correspondent. Uh, he switched. A lot of guys were, so I knew he needed to get up and out of date. It's a huge difference, I think. Hutton said, weight and the biggest difference between a composite stick, traditional blends of wood, fiberglass, and foam. New composite sticks weigh less than 1.4 pounds compared to the old wood models that average closer to 1.9 pounds. The stick is unreal how light it is, said Sergei Borowski of the Florida Panthers, who switched to CCM's composite this offseason after running into supply problems with wind sticks last season. The difference in the number of goalies using composite in the past seasons is also significant. Um, it is marked by the end of the season the use of Bauer's wooden models in the NHL. This appearance is not surprising to consider Bauer led the way with the composite goal sticks using the lead as far back as 2007. 24 NHL goalies currently use composite sticks. Mark Andre Fleury of the Vegas Golden Knights is the last NHL going using a CCM wood stick. The change for CCM began in 2014 when it's offered its first composite stick and 20% of the NHL roster switched by 2016. It was close to 50% of the goalies that use CCM. It was an 80% adoption rate uh, from 2018 to 2019. When Warrior first offered its composite sticks to NHL goalies for the 2007-2018 season, 11 switched and 17 stayed with a wood stick. Last season, there were 21 NHL goalies using composite and 11 remaining uh, with wood. This season, 24 are using composite sticks. The remaining four are still using a foam core wind stick this season and using a Warrior Swagger. The Los Angeles Kings, Jonathan Quick, and Jack Campbell – Alex Stalock of the Minnesota Watt and Brian Elliott of the Flyers are the five holdouts that are still left. Elliott said, in light, when I go back for my phone core stick, it's night and day how much more comfortable I am. I just like how you can feel and direct the pucks a little bit better with old school sticks. You can absorb a little bit better and control it. So I'm like, why switch? Kari Price of the Montreal Canadiens and recent retired goalie Roberto Longo each played more than a decade using foam core sticks, but switch after injuries gave them a chance to try a composite. So guys, that's kind of like the new thing that they're doing now. They're offering goalie sticks um, in the NHL for the goaltenders. Um, that seems to be an upward trend that they're trying to get away from the old wood sticks. Again, guys, as you know, most of all forwards and defensemen use some kind of composite stick. They don't use wooden sticks anymore, um, just like as equipment has, you know, basically um, modernized in every sport, golf, tennis, you name it, football, you name it, baseball, everything is, is, is starting to become um, more composite and all that stuff as well. Um, so now there's only five goalies left, guys, in all of the NHL that use a wooden stick. So we'll see how long it takes before the switch is completely made to composite, which means that will leave the old wind sticks basically extinct because they're the last remaining five out there that are um, out there. So that is how that goes. Um, again, guys, I don't know what happened, but um, I don't have anyone in here, but there was a guest three um, that – at 8.42, I mean, put a gift in my chat uh, that is very, very not right for the chat. Um, so I don't know who that was. I don't appreciate that. Um, I hate to differ from my show, but um, I don't appreciate that. If you were on TalkShoe and you left that gif in there, I don't know who, it, who did that. Um, I can't get rid of it, obviously. I don't think I can. Um, I can't clean that up. I don't believe. Let's see if I can. Uh, I don't think that there's a way for me to get rid of that. So I apologize if anyone comes on TalkShoe 
um, through there. If you see the GIF on the right side of the screen, I want to apologize. 